It's been a brutal crackdown on the pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong. Organizers estimated as many as 1.7 million people took to the streets in 2019. New protests were sparked when a new national security law came into force, making it a criminal offense not to cooperate with China's security agencies. Protesters sensed an encroaching police state. In response, the Home Office here created a new pathway to British citizenship for Hong Kong residents. We will put in place new arrangements to allow those in Hong Kong who hold British national overseas passports to come to the UK. More than 140,000 people have been granted British national overseas visas to come to the UK. Out of the Five Eyes group of Western nations that share intelligence, only America uses its own staff to process visas at every stage. Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the UK all use outsourced visa application centres. Under Chinese law, the centres must work with local Chinese companies, but these companies must cooperate secretly if asked by the country's intelligence agencies under the national security law. Final decisions are taken by vetted UK staff, but outsourcing administrative work speeds up the process and saves money. But senior intelligence insiders have told us that in Hong Kong and China, this policy is unsafe. Tig Fadden was National Security Advisor to the Canadian Prime Minister. Before that, he was head of the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, CSIS, the equivalent of MI5. Chinese law is very clear. If the Ministry of State Security wants support, uh, cooperation and help from anybody in China, corporate or not, they're going to get it. Dick Fadden says no one can be sure if China has targeted anyone by compromising visa services already, but he maintains the risk is too great and outsourcing of any kind should stop. We shouldn't have done it, Canada. You shouldn't have done it in the UK, and I don't think other NATO and Five Eyes partners should have either. Former MI6 officer Christopher Steele also believes outsourcing is a risk. You have to differentiate between, you know, hostile countries and countries who we are allied to or who are not non-threatening, some of the non-aligned countries. And of course, in all these situations, there's a trade-off between cost-cutting and efficiency and security. But the idea that you would apply the same rules across the board, I think, is nuts, basically. I don't see how it could ever have been accepted. In Hong Kong in 2019, Campaigners say police deliberately failed to stop gang members attacking pro-democracy protesters. Lee, a civil servant, was appalled and posted comments online using his real name. We're protecting his identity because his family is still in Hong Kong. So I reposted a news article on it and added a caption. It says, it's a shame because police shouldn't be cooperating with gangsters. Apparently, someone just screenshotted it and sent to the superiors at my work. After my superior said that he might contact national security about this incident, I feel really unsafe. Lee went straight to the UK's visa application centre, run by VFS Global and its local partner, Glory Visa Consulting Company. I handed in the document's physical copy to them, again after check it. They made a photocopy and also take away my passport and called me to take biometrics, namely my fingerprints, and take a photo of me. And after that, they kept my passport for around three weeks. A hostile foreign intelligence agency would be very interested in having access to British government visa records for a number of reasons. One would be defensive, so they would want to know who was coming and going um, from the country. They would be particularly interested, I think, in anything, the ecosystem surrounding dissidents, political opponents. Hong Kong activists like Anouk Weir are worried. It's extremely important for these cases specifically, this situation specifically, that the government doesn't have access to people's visa applications and the, the information in those files. The Chinese government doesn't need to be involved in any part of this process. Pressure could be brought on families back home, and that, that, that's a risk, isn't it? 
I think that's a very grave risk, and it involves far more people than just those who are applying for visas. I think we have pretty clear evidence in the West that the Chinese do like to keep an eye on uh, their diaspora, uh, and they use that knowledge and the knowledge of where their families and friends are back in China to exercise influence. So it seems to me that it's not in the interest of Western governments, yours and mine, to provide them with easy access to information. VFS Global also runs 15 visa application centers in mainland China. In the capital, its local partner is Beijing Xuanzhong. It's alleged that Beijing Xuanzhong is owned by an arm of the Municipal Public Security Bureau, basically the Chinese police. The outsourcing arrangement with VFS Global is part of a £320 million contract awarded by the Home Office in 2014, a time when all the talk was about closer economic ties and how trade would lead to political reform. That's an idea now described as naive by the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Now let's be clear, the so-called golden era is over. We recognise China poses a systemic challenge to our values and interests. The Home Office declined to be interviewed, but a spokesperson said information captured by the local Chinese partners is encrypted and securely transmitted to UKVI and subsequently automatically deleted from commercial partner systems. It added, Chinese facilities management companies have no access to stored visa application data and no influence on the integrity of the visa application process or involvement in visa decision making. Hong Kong campaigners are incredulous that the British government would permit even administrative work for visas to be outsourced to Chinese companies. It's dangerous to give access to such data to the Chinese intelligence service. My bottom line is, as long as sensitive information is within Hong Kong soil, it is not safe. Do you trust local Chinese-owned companies with your data? If they were asked by the Chinese intelligence services for information, do you trust that they wouldn't give it? Not really. Anyone on Hong Kong soil can't resist such an order unless they want to be arrested or deported. We asked VFS Global about security. In a statement, it told us it fully owns and operates the IT systems in which visa applicants' data is stored and it stressed its Chinese partner companies provide administrative staff only, all of whom undergo detailed background screening and are closely supervised and subject to stringent security measures. Street protests this week in China against COVID restrictions once again raise the possibility that activists at some point will apply to enter the UK. If so, should we be relying on Chinese-owned companies to help process their visas?